Good morning, Talladega County. I'm LeAngela Garrett, and you're watching Pet Connect today. And today's guest is Dr. Baxley. Good morning, Dr. Baxley. How are you doing? Good morning. Good to be here. I'm doing fine. Oh, well, thank you for coming in. We appreciate it. I was, I was a little excited because I was like, oh, I've got all these questions. Because <laughs> um, many times, you know, when you go and you see your veterinarian, you see just the veterinarian side. But I always wonder, like, you know, how did you get involved in veterinarian medicine? I kind of, kind of migrated into it, basically. Did you really? I always wanted to work with animals, and so I just kind of it just worked my way into veterinary medicine. I love it. I love it. Now, where did you go to school? Well, I went to uh, Auburn. Did you? Oh, yeah. so we say War Eagle here, right? Yeah, War Eagle. <laughs> I actually have three degrees from Auburn. Do you really? So not just veterinarian medicine? No, I went into microbiology first. Okay. And then uh, zoology. Okay. And then from zoology, I went into veterinary medicine. So you did know that at some, it, you did want to work with animals. You just didn't know. Did, at what point do you make the decision that you want to work with dogs and cats as opposed to maybe zoo animals? Well, um, I started out working with actually both, oh. large and small. Okay. And it got to a point there. There's so much information out there sure. on all of them sure. that you have to narrow it down right. sooner or later. Right. So, right. So just uh, narrowed it down to dogs and cats. There you go. Now, do you have your own pet? <laughs> I do. I have actually three. I have do two really? dogs and one cat. Okay. And uh, so they're all throwaways, oh. basically. Oh. <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> So you recycled them? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Um, the last one, Digger. Digger? He's, he's the one I take around to different uh, uh, places. So he can go around off. with you? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's he loves, nice. He loves people. Oh, does he? He loves them. Yeah. Do you find that that's like one of those, um, it just opens conversation with people when you have Digger with you and you're walking around? And, oh, yeah. He's, yeah. He's, he's an attention getter. Oh, is he? <laughs> oh, oh, yes. And like that, he loves people and people love him. Oh, and I love he, it. He's kind of odd. He, I went outside to take a break and um, he walked up and we, we just kind of talked to him. And, sure. And I went back into the clinic and he walked up to the door and uh, he started, just sat there, and I said, well, are you coming in or not? And, <laughs> and he sat there for a minute and then walked in. Oh, and that's fabulous. had him ever since. Oh, now how long have you had him? Uh, about a little over two years, I think. Okay, so, so he was meant to be. Yeah. I love that. And your clinic is here in Sylacauga. Have Business. you always practiced in Sylacauga? No. Uh, actually, after school, I went to South Alabama, Foley. Okay, okay. Foley. And then, it's uh, a pretty part. Um, Worked there for a while, and then uh, um, kind of from there, I kind of worked around at different clinics. Sure. Doing sure. relief work. Sure. And then from relief work, I went to Meridian, Mississippi. Okay. Worked there for a number of years. Right. And then from Meridian, I said, well, I'm, I'm going to come home. And this is home. So I've been here since 2000. Oh, wow. Well, welcome back, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> I, um, well... Part of the reason why I wanted to speak with you and everything is because April is um, the awareness for heartworm it is. awareness. And so can you tell us a little bit about heartworms, just in general? Heart Act like I know nothing about them. <laughs> heartworms. We see a lot of heartworm disease. Heartworms are spread by mosquitoes from okay. dog to dog. Okay. Um, generally in, in dogs... Um, it uh, basically causes heart disease. Right. Uh, they get in the heart and lungs. Um, um, basically causes a heart failure. Sure. And, sure. Uh, causes, in some cases, really severe disease. Right. Uh, and can cats get heartworms? Cats can get heartworms. Okay. Um, uh, cats are real odd. They can cause. Um, and basically, it's a spillover. There's so many dogs that have heartworm disease that it's spilled over into cats. Okay. And the thing with cats is that the symptoms can be really mild, mm -hmm. uh, a little bit of vomiting, a little bit of coughing, all the way up to sudden death. Mm. And it can happen really quick. And the thing, dogs can carry a real heavy load of heartworms. Okay. And it's still not cause a whole lot of problems. Sure. But cats, one or two heartworms 
can cause some real severe problems. Right, right. right. And, so. and for um, dogs that have heartworms, what would they do? What would someone do? Or is there a way to, you know, for them not to get the heartworms? Right. There, there's all sorts of preventatives. Okay. There's several preventatives on the market that so, we can put them on. If you have a dog, how young would you put a dog on heartworm prevention? We want to put them on there before six weeks of age okay. or before six months of age. Okay. Uh, we generally, as a rule, put them on there around 12 weeks of age. Okay. Because the heartworm medicine um, not only takes care of the heartworm disease, but it also prevents uh, other infections. Like parasites, intestinal parasites and, intestinal and stuff. Intestinal parasites in particular, like roundworm and hookworm. Okay. So we generally try to put them on there around 12 weeks of age. And I would imagine, I mean, we live in the southeast. It's always hot. And we it's always, always have, hot. We yeah. see a huge amount of, not only heartworm disease, but a huge amount of roundworm and hookworms. Sure. Well, I'm thinking with all the rain and everything, there's nothing but mosquitoes. I mean, mosquitoes I feel like everywhere. we come in... I walk out on the back porch sometimes, and it's like I can I can just tell that they're they're swarming <laughs> around me. But they are now. And if if I didn't if I wasn't diligent, and I did not get my dog um, on heartworm prevention or my puppy on heartworm prevention, what should I do? Because I it, just didn't know. Yeah, it only takes one mosquito. Right. And we need to have them tested. Okay. And what does tested look like? Testing, uh, we take a little blood sample mm -hmm. and um, put it in um, a little test and just about eight minutes or so, we have a test result. Okay, kind of like a pregnancy test. Yes, kind of like, <laughs> it's all, almost the same. Is and, it? Okay, yes. okay. Very similar. And then if my dog tested positive, then there's treatment. There is treatment, it has a very good treatment. Uh, two shots, about 24 hours apart. And sure. And gets rid of them. It's okay. a very good treatment. Okay. And for cats, if the cat has treatment in cats, there's no treatment in cats. Okay. So it makes it just a little bit different. It right? makes it a little bit different. There's, you have to kind of treat cats symptomatically. Oh. And that's that's the problem with cats. Right. Right. Bless. So. Bless. Now, does a cat get the heartworm test to say that it is? We heartworm? can do tests on, do on cats. Okay. And okay. See if they have them. Oh, I see. I just learned something new. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> so if you have a dog or a puppy or even a cat or, um, and you want to learn more information regarding heartworm prevention and heartworm disease, please reach out um, to your local veterinarian. Dr. Baxley's here in Sylacauga and um, just get some more information so you can take care of your, your fur friends, so to speak. Um, so when a, when a family is probably picking out a pet, what are some things that they want to consider? Uh, do your research. Okay. Consider, consider the pet and consider your lifestyle. Right. Um, some pets are, tend to be uh, a little hyper. Mm -hmm. They need a lot of space, need a lot of room to mm -hmm. run and play. Uh, consider your lifestyle. Right. You know, uh, do you have the room for the pet? Uh, right. Are you real active? Um, is the pet real active? Do they need a lot of attention? Mm -hmm. um, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and the, there's all sorts of information out there about different breeds sure. and sure. what they require. Sure. Now keep in mind that even though the breed may be real, uh, uh, um, what am I trying to say? Not real active as sure. a breed, there's individuals. Okay. 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 And some individuals in that breed may need more attention than sure. others. Sure. Sure. Um, also, another thing that comes up a lot um, that we get calls for all the time is that we'll have people call mm -hmm. and we just adopted this animal, but I don't have money to pay for Right. He's sick now and we can't. Make sure you have the resources to take care of that animal. Sure. To understand about the veterinarian costs that right. are associated you know, is this, with... Is this a uh, high cost animal or right. is it... Right. Or is it not? Sure. You know? Sure. So, I know that with some of the, um, like for instance, the puppies, they have a series of shots. They have a series We've learned of that shots. in our past, um, you know, conversations on Pet Connect as well as 
I think cats would have a series of shots too. All, correct? all the puppies and kittens have a series of shots that okay. we need to do. Right, right. Uh, to boost their immune system. Sure. And uh, get them. And keep them safe. Keep them safe and healthy. And so you can always go to the Silicaga Animal Shelter and see they have adoptable um, cats and dogs and puppies and kittens. And um, someone there will be happy to speak with you about adopting your next fur friend. Um, and then that, which kind of leads me to our next topic. It's my understanding you have a special project. We are. We're in Coos County. Um, myself and a couple others are working on an animal shelter for Coos County. That's wonderful. And That's great that, news. We have our 5013C okay. already. We have a building. Uh, we are working on getting everything organized and, and done. Um, we have some meetings coming up. Um, so with the with that, so it's the Coosa County Animal Shelter. That, that we're on Facebook. You're on Facebook. So anybody that wanted more information on either how to volunteer or how to or just finding out about the planning of it would go to the Facebook page. Go to the page. Facebook page, and um, that'll give you more information. Uh, we have a volunteer meeting coming up. Um, and that'll give you information on when and where that is. Sure, sure. And we can use all the monetary help we can get. We can use the volunteers that we can get. So sure. please go there and look, and uh, we can certainly use everyone's help. Oh, it sounds you great. Think? That's nice to be able to help Coosa County um, with that, because I know that they've it's, had... It's been long needed, and we are on our way. So <laughs> help I, us out. I like that. I like that a lot. So um, you mentioned that your clinic is here in Sylacauga. What are the hours of the clinic? We are open uh, Monday th through Thursday from 8 to 5 mm -hmm. and on Friday from 8 to noon. And Friday 8 to noon. Mm -hmm. And then if I had an emergency, what would I do with my pet? We're kind of gotten more like MDs. We refer them to the emergency centers sure. after hours. Sure. Um, so... Uh, I still take a few emergencies right, at right. the clinic, but mostly we're referring to so they're the emergency clinics were staffed after hours. Right. They're fully staffed and right. they can handle emergencies a whole lot better than we can. Sure, sure, so sure. It just like, makes better sense to, to uh, require for them to them, go on. Right. Mm -hmm. Going up there. They can do emergency surgeries after hours. They can handle things a whole lot better than Sure. Uh, local veterinarians. Go. Right, 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 right. And in regards to some of our animals here and everything, I know we um, are always talking about spaying or neutering. Um, Please <laughs> give them spayed or neutered. Right now we're having them come in. They're in heat or already pregnant. Um, Please give them spayed or neutered before that. Right. It's a whole lot easier. And it's easier on the animal. It right. is easier on the animal. What are some benefits to the animal other than obviously just the spay, you know, the pet population? What are some other benefits to the animal in regards to, and ultimately to the to the family, um, in when you have your pet spayed or neutered? Well, the main benefit is if they have puppies or kittens, you're left with trying to find them homes. Right. Right. And that, uh, a lot of times, is a big chore. Sure, for sure, people. sure. And, uh, you know, you've got, you may have anywhere from three, four, up to 10 or 12. Right. Sometimes. Mouse to mouse feed. Mouse to feed. <laughs> and then finding them home, so, uh, is a chore. You right. Know? And you see on, on Facebook or other places where, you know, all these cats and puppies or kittens and puppies or, you know, people trying to find homes for them. Sure. I or think I've also heard that it's um, for, specifically for your, uh, like, it might, in dogs, they might be less inclined to roam. They are less inclined to roam. They're less inclined to um, get in fights and right. hit by cars. And, and like cats, that. would that be the same thing? And The then same thing. They tend to stay at home sure. much more. Sure, sure. Uh, so uh, it helps all the way around. Right, right. And the same thing I would imagine with, um, you know, just like we get cancer, I would imagine that they get cancer too. A lot less cancer, yes. My, so, yes. So what I'm hearing is 
spay or neuter your pet. And um, if you need assistance with that, then please reach out. Um, and I just, I really, for our pet population problem and for our community, we, it's my understanding that's the way to go. That is the way to go. I've had people tell me that before they got their dog neutered, he was running all over the place and now he pays more attention to me than he did running around. Oh, that's good. So, that's uh, good. You hear things like that all the time. You know, and the, the benefit also to the community is when you have a pet and it can lower your blood pressure, it can give you a purpose. Um, it's, so. it's a soothing. It is, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. They enrich our lives, don't they? They do, very much. Uh, well, Dr. Baxley, thank you so much for being here today. I oh, really appreciate it. Welcome. I appreciate you coming in early and talking to us about that. And just a couple of reminders. Um, we also have on April 23rd, they will be collecting um, for a puppy and kitten shower, the feral dogs of Avondale Mill. And that will be at PetSense from, I believe it's nine until two. And then the exciting news that Dr. Baxley shared with us today regarding Coosa County getting their own animal shelter. Please check out their Facebook page. And don't forget, spare new to your pets. Have a great day.